All right, so here we go. We have three things to do today. We're finishing up 4.6. Won't take me very long, and you can have the rest of the class to work on your worksheet, okay? So normally I teach you two ways to do this next thing, but I'm not going to, guys. I'm just going to show you the easiest way, okay? So um, I to the 35th power. I to the 35th power. All right. Tell me what you're supposed to know. Tell me what. Tell me all the four I won, that you want. Very good. I won. I won. Keep I won. And what? Keep your negative, Keep negative stuff on the inside. So this is just I to the first. He is the square root of negative one. This is I to the second. This is I to the third. And this is I to the fourth. And then it starts repeating itself. Okay. So I to the fifth is this guy. I to the sixth. This is this one. I to the seventh. I to the eighth. Count all the way down. Yeah. No, we don't want to count all the way down. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take sets of four out of this guy. I'm gonna divide this guy by four. The only thing I care about is what's left over. The remainder. I don't care about anything else. Okay. So I'm gonna say what is four divided into thirty-five? How many times does four divide into thirty-five? Eight times? What's eight times four? Thirty-two. And thirty-two from thirty-five is three. This is what I care about. There's my answer. I to the third is negative five. The remainder, because look, guys, here's what happens. You go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, until number 12, 13, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 33, 34, 35. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. So the remainder is how many you're counting down, okay? The remainder is how many you're counting down. All right, so here's your next one. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. I to the 26th. I to the 26th. Yes, that's what that is. Do you have your answer? Yes. Okay. So y'all listen to me. I, you can write it down on your paper. You don't have to. You can do it in your head. The only thing I care about is the remainder. remainder. I don't care how many times it goes in there. I just care what's left over. Okay? How many times does four? <laughs> why am I dividing four into there? Because there's four. Five That's five. exactly right. There's a, it's, a, it's a pattern of four. It repeats at four. If, re, if it repeated at five, what would I do? I divide by five. Okay? So how many times does four go into 26? Six. Six times. With how many left over? <coughs> two. two. So the two is what I'm looking at. One, two. What's my answer? Three, one. If there's no remainder, is it just four? I'm going to let you figure it out. <laughs> You will not have a calculator on the test. You will not have a calculator on the test. I'm going to show you why in just a minute. Here's what you, y'all, look, you can do the old long division back from the fourth and fifth grade, okay? I'm going to do it in my head. How many times does four go into 13? Three. Three times with how many left over? Four. One. How many times does four go into 16? Four. Four times with none left over. So my remainder is zero. Where am I? Uh, one. You're right here. See? One, two, three, four. Oh, okay. How many times does four go into four? One. One time with none left over. So if it's a multiple of four, where are you stuck? Right there at the bottom. So my answer is one. Okay? Anybody got a question? Nope. Okay, so now I'm going to show you why I'm not going to let you use a calculator. Okay? So everything, everything that we have
have done thus far? I can't decide which is better. Like none of them are better. Uh, whatever. Um, so everything that we've done thus far, you could do on your calculator. Now, the only reason I'm showing you is because could I use my calculator to check my worksheet? Yes, I can. You will not have a calculator on the test. So if you use your calculator to do your worksheet, you're going to flunk the test. Okay? But I'm going to show you. Can we check it? <coughs> yes, but you won't have it on your test. So Look right. Here's the decimal. Okay? Look right. at that right there. What is that? I. I. Okay. So I'm going to do I to the 35th power. All right? So I'm going to go second and I. Okay? There it is. Can y'all tell that's an I? Mm -hmm. Okay. Raised to the 35th power. I'm going to pray that it does this funky thing that it did this morning. Oh, and it did. And I get this answer, and you're like, what, what in the world is that? Okay, so what does 5e to the minus 13 mean? Five times 13. That's exactly what it means. It means 5 times 10 to the negative 13th power. And then it says minus i. Okay, so let's look at this guy right here. Let's look at this guy. Do y'all know what that is? Y'all, that is point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. That is this number right here. People, what is that number? Zero. People, this is so this is so close to zero. If um if you worked for NASA and you got that close on your measurements for building the space shuttle. Is it going to blow up? No, no, it, people, that, that is, like he got so close to zero, but he just couldn't quite get there, all right? It's just a little bit glitchy sometimes, and that's what happens, but this is zero. Y'all, if you got this much money, guess what? You're broke. You're broke, okay? <laughs> you got nothing, people. If you work for the CDC, okay, and you got this many germs, you're gonna be okay. You're going to be okay, all right? This is zero. So understand that when you see something like this, y'all, this pops up, stuff like this pops up a lot. Um, if you're, sometimes if you're graphing something and you ask it to find a zero, if you're looking for a zero, you're looking for an x-intercept. Do you agree? What should y be if you're looking for an x-intercept? Zero, right? If you want to be on the x-axis, your y had better be zero. Sometimes it'll tell you your y is something like this. And you're like, what? Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, that's zero. Okay? So what is zero minus I? Negative I. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's look at this guy right here. Okay? Because this one did a funny, funky thing, too. They don't always do that, but just every once in a while it does. So you need to know that's what's going on. So I'm going to go second and I raised to the 136th power. Uh-oh, there it goes again. One plus, y'all, 3.6 times 10 to the negative 12, zero. zero I. What is one plus zero I? Zero. One. Okay, so I can check these. Um, what about this? What if I wanted to do this? What if I said, what is two minus three I times four plus seven I? Boom, 29 plus 2i, okay? So you can add, you can subtract, you can multiply, you can do all of those things and check your problems on your, on your worksheet. On your test, you won't be able to, okay? Um, one other thing. Do you remember how on our papers we wrote the problem three minus four i over seven? Okay, he is not going to give you an answer like this. He's going to put that answer in standard form. It's going to look like this. Three-sevenths minus four-sevenths I. A plus B I. This is what his answer is going to look like. Okay? I'm going to show you it. All right? Can do our answers have to be like that on the worksheet? No. Mm -mm. I, use, I like mine like this better. This is easier for me to grade. That, that's my own, you know. 
trying to make my life easier, okay? So um, I'm just going to show you what it would look like if you were doing something on a calculator, like if you were multiplying or dividing or something, and you got this, all right? So um, let's see. I'm going to choose my little fraction button, and I'm going to put 3 minus 4i on the top, and I'm going to put a 7 on the bottom. See, there it is right there. No, that was not the one I did. Never mind. Oh, I used parentheses. Okay, so I'll try that. So I'll grab that guy. All right, so 3 minus 4i divided by 7. He wouldn't let me use that fraction button. Um, I don't know why. Sometimes the calculators are kind of weird. But anyway, so if I press enter, then this is what it gives me. This is the decimal equivalent of this. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So how do I make it turn it into a fraction where I can check my answer a little bit better? Yeah. Remember? Math. And then the first thing that pops up is fraction. And he said, hey, lady, you will turn that answer into a fraction? Yes, sir. So there it is. Three-sevenths minus four-sevenths I. You got it? Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's a, you just saw me try to put 3 minus 4i on the top of the fraction and 7 on the bottom, and he said, oh, no, lady, you can't do that. All right, so sometimes you just have to work with your calculator. All right, so anybody got a question? Everybody good with that? Okay, so the next thing we're going to learn is how to graph a complex number. Okay? Graph a complex number. Y'all, this is going to be really, really easy. Okay? Really, really easy. So normally when we graph stuff, we graph it on an X and Y axis. Do you agree? Okay. So this time, instead of an X and Y axis, you're going to have a real axis and an imaginary axis. Because what makes up a complex number? A real part and an imaginary part. Okay? So let's pretend that the first, the first one we want to graph is 3 minus 2i. Okay, so the very first thing you got to figure out is you got to figure out which one of these axes is the real axis and which <coughs> one is the imaginary axis. You get to pick. Huh? You get to pick. No, you don't get to pick. They already picked, but I'll tell you an easy way to remember. When you have a point, who comes first in the point? Yes. X. And this is my x-axis. Do you agree? <coughs> Look at that complex number in standard form. Who comes first? The real part or the imaginary part? The real part. Then this is my real axis. Does that make sense that to you? The real axis? Yes, this is always the real axis. Okay? And this is always the imaginary axis. But what happens is then the kids are like, if they have to do their own, they're like, whoa, wait a minute, I can't remember which one's real and which one's imaginary. It's the same th kind of thing as a point. Whoever comes first is this horizontal and the other one is the vertical. Okay? So I'm going to plot this point right here. Y'all, it is going to be exactly what you think it's going to be. I'm going to start at the origin. The real part is three. So where do I go? Okay. To the right three. One, two, three. The imaginary part is negative 2i, so where do I go? Down two. Down two. So that's the point. Really? Yes. It is just, it's logical. It's exactly what you think it would be. The real part, the imaginary part. Okay, you want to try one? Yeah. Here's yours. <coughs> negative 1 plus 4i. Negative 1 plus 4i. I want you to plot it. Everybody got it? Okay, so I'm starting at the origin. When you graph, you always start at the origin, okay? So where do I go first? To the left one. Negative one is to the left one. And then where do I go? Up four. Up four. So one, two, three, four. So there's my point. Make sense? Okay, here's the next one. Try this one. 
negative 4 minus 2i. Negative 4 minus 2i. Where do I go first? Left four. One, two, three, four. Then where do I go? Down two. One, two. So there's my point. Now listen to me. There are none of these on your worksheet. There are some on the test. What? Should you miss any of these? No. You miss these and I don't even feel bad for you. These are so stinking easy. All right. So that's enough of that. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to talk about <coughs> absolute value of complex numbers. Absolute value of complex number. Okay, so I'm going to start off and I'm going to find the absolute value of this number. And the reason that I'm going to do that is because there is a formula that I'm going to make. I'm going to let you make it up. Okay? You're going to have to discover the formula. I'm not going to tell it to you. Okay? And I'm going to say this. You will do it, and most of you will do it in less than 30 seconds. Some of you, it might take a minute. But you'll be okay. So I'm going to find the absolute you're never value. Gonna, you're never going to say if it's right? No, I will. Okay. Um, so I'm going to find the absolute value. We're going to do this first guy right there. I'm going to find the absolute value of 3 minus 2i. Okay? The absolute value of 3 minus 2i. Now, tell me what the definition of absolute value is. For the sort of zero. Yeah. It's, it's how far is this number away from zero. It's this distance right here. That's what I'm trying to measure. Okay? Watch what I'm fixing to do. What's the length of this side right here? Three. See that three? What's the length of this side? Three. Two. Do you know how to find that guy? Yeah. He's the square root of what? Uh, three squared plus? A squared plus B squared. Yeah, A squared plus B squared yeah. equals C squared. So I said he's the square root, the Pythagorean theorem. Three squared plus, it's really a negative two, isn't it? But when you square it, what happens to it? Are these parentheses important? Very much so. Okay, so this is the square root of, what's 3 squared? Nine. Plus what's negative 2 squared? Four. And what's 9 and 4? Four? What? Yeah. Oh. Okay? <laughs> now, oh. remember to do this. Remember to do this. Is there a perfect square that divides into, four, into 13 no. evenly? No. no. It's a prime number. So this is simplified. Okay? So watch. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you make the formula up. Here it is. The absolute value of a complex number, a plus b i. That's any complex number. The absolute value of any complex number is equal to what? The what? The square root of c. Look at there. A squared plus b squared. So this is easy, isn't it? All right. So you try this one. The absolute value of negative 4, 1, sorry, negative 1 plus 4i. Four Y'all got it? So the square root of a squared, that's <coughs> negative one squared. Guys, listen to me. If you square that negative and you get a negative, shame on you. Okay? Plus b squared. What's negative one squared? One. Plus what's four squared? Two. Is it always going to be a number that you can't simplify? No. no. It just happened to work out that way for us. So the square root of 17. All right. So here again. These last two skills, there are none on your worksheet. 
All right? There's not really any in your book. In, there's not any. If you went to this section, 4.6, there would be none in the practice. So this is the only place you're going to find any practice. So you can write this down, and then I'm going to pop my book up here in case you don't have a book, and I'll let you snap a picture or write them down really quick or whatever, and then I'm going to turn this off, and then we're finished. You have the rest of the time to work on your worksheet, okay? So there it is, 279, guided practice, 15 through 18. Here they are right here. <coughs> Okay, here they are right here. If now, you have a book at home, you don't have to. Yeah, if you have the book at home, you don't have to worry about it. Um, but it has the answers on here, okay? Mm -hmm. It does have the answers on here. Y'all, the answers don't go, oh, I hate it when she shows me the answer. People, the answer doesn't. I mean, it's just a check. You know, mm -hmm. it's not going to make you forget how to work the problem. I'm going to show you one other thing too, okay? Look at this right here. Pa, this is your awesome teacher. I made this problem up on the fly one year, all right? And um, asked the kids to work it out. And it is amazing. You will be amazed. It is the most, I'm like, the kids all started laughing. They were like, you didn't make that up. And I was like, yes, I did. That's awesome. So I wrote, awesome problem. All right, so you might want to, I mean, if you want some extra practice, that's a pretty cool problem. It works out really nice. All right, so if you want to try that problem, you can. All right, so I'm fixing to stop that video. You can have the rest of the time to work on your, work, your review, your worksheet. It's due tomorrow.